In this series of videos, we explore financial ratios. Ratios allow us to compare one number to another and make sense of the numbers. But first, let's look at some non-financial ratios I'm sure you're familiar with. For example, miles per gallon. If you're looking for a new car, you might look at miles per gallon. For example, the 2013 Chevy Cruze gets 38 miles per gallon on the highway, as opposed to the 8-cylinder Dodge Charger only getting 23. Which would you buy? Body mass index? Not going there. Batting average? Ryan Braun of the Milwaukee Blue Brewers so far in 2013 has had 67 hits. Is this good? Well, it would help us to know if we could compare that to the number of times he's been at bat. His batting average is .298. Very good indeed. Free throw average, another sports ratio, and percent daily value. I take a look at the percent daily value in some foods to see how much salt or sugar or vitamins there are. Financial ratios also compare one number to another. The numbers by themselves don't mean a lot and ratios help us to make sense of them. We can compare one company to a competitor. If management does this, it's called benchmarking. Managers will look at growth in sales and earnings. Everyone wants to see sales and earnings go up. It's very important for managers to know the profit margin, the net income profit margin, and also the gross profit number. Managers will evaluate the asset mix and financing. How much debt is a company using? So management can use these ratios to measure performance, to compare their company to others, find out how they're doing, and to pinpoint potential trouble areas. Note that ratios can also be used as a, manage, as a measure of management effectiveness for bonuses and promotion. Well, where did the numbers come from? For managers, they can come from internal financial statements. For other users, like banks and analysts and investors, they come from published financial statements. Quick review of the income statement. Summary of a company's operating results over a period of time, usually a year, but financial statements are also produced quarterly for public companies. So we have our revenues or sales minus expenses to give us our profit or loss. What do we look for in the income statement? Trends. Are sales up? Earnings up? Relationships. Are expenses growing faster than revenues? And relative amounts. We spend more time on larger amounts versus small amounts. We also have the balance sheet which summarizes a company's assets, liabilities, and stockholders' equity at one point in time. It's like a snapshot. The assets are what the company owns, liabilities what the company owes, and equity is the capital the stockholders have invested in the company. Remember the accounting equation. Assets are equal to liabilities plus owner's equity. So what are we looking for on the balance sheet? Well, we look for relative amounts. Are there large amounts of inventory or large amounts of debt? It's easier to see this using a common size statement like you see in your chapter. We also look at trends. Are trends improving or decreasing? In your project, we'll use two sources of ratios. We'll use ratios that you calculate from a public company's latest annual report. So it will be as of the latest year end date. We'll also use ratios gathered from internet sources. Those will be as of the current date that you gather them. Now some ratios change daily. 
Also, they may be calculated differently than the way we are calculating them using our textbook. Many textbooks, many sites calculate the ratios a little bit differently. Therefore, we can't compare directly the ratios from these two different sources. Did your mom ever tell you we can't compare apples to oranges? Same thing here. We're going to compare ratios calculated from annual reports with the ratios of a competitor. When we gather ratios from the internet sources, we're going to compare to other ratios gathered from the internet's um, source. In these videos, we'll look at six major types of ratios. And you can take a look at here the questions that these types of ratios help us answer. Then we'll wrap it all up with DuPont analysis. Enjoy!